pine trees? Not pine, and I'll tell you why in a minute, but that's good thinking. Aspen. There's two other main types that the beaver like. Oak? Nope, not oak. Willow. Willow. Willow's probably number one, and then aspen. And there's one more very similar. It's always along rivers. It's really tall. <gasps> Red tree? No, cottonwood. Oh. Cottonwood. Cottonwood, willow, aspen, they all have slick, succulent bark. Succulent means kind of juicy and tasty. Now you think about oak tree and pine trees, they have rough, thick bark. And pine trees have that nasty, strong pine taste. They would cut pine trees down occasionally to use the, the branches for building material for dams and lodges. So the first thing I'm looking for is water. Second thing I'm looking for is beaver food. Now we're getting to some of those other things you guys talked about. A beaver dam, a beaver lodge, chewed on beaver trees like this piece here, okay, where beaver have been chewing. Okay. That tells me if I see a dam or a lodge or something, there has been beaver in this water. But what's going to tell me that there are beaver in this water right now? Okay, how about this, in the, in the reddish coat there? Uh, if you see any beaver, like if you walk up in there swimming. There you go. You might be lucky and actually see the beavers. Okay, good. What else? Uh, maybe there might be beaver dams. Okay, the beaver dam. That, that, okay, now, I might see a beaver dam that's been there ten years for ten years. How do I know there's beaver now? Beaver droppings. Beaver droppings. Maybe like fresh tracks. Fresh tracks, excellent. Droppings, tracks. Fresh chewed trees. This one's really old. But I, I can see ones that have been chewed the night before. And I said, oh, okay. Now I know that there's beaver in this pond. Now I, I can set my traps, okay? Because there's no sense setting traps if there's no beaver around, right? Yeah. I'm not going to make any money and I'm going to go to rendezvous and I'm going to be really poor and not have any fun, okay? So, there's beaver. Now, the average mountain man brought six traps with him. Okay? These traps were made in St. Louis. I had to bring them all the way out to the mountains. In St. Louis, I could buy this trap for $1.50. The rendezvous had cost me $12. Wow, that's like a thousand percent more at rendezvous. So, these are very valuable to the mountain man. These are made by a blacksmith. And these were probably the second most valuable thing that the mountain man had behind his gun. His rifle and guns kept him alive. It fed him and it protected him. And his next important tools were beaver traps to take to catch the beaver that he's after. Okay, so I'm gonna pass around the beaver fur while we're talking, so you can look at it, so I don't forget. Before you just go ahead and pass this around. What I want you to look at on the beaver fur is there's two kinds of fur on here. There's a slick, shiny, pretty hair on the outside. If you pull that backwards and look underneath, you see the thick felt fur underneath, it keep, the part that keeps them warm, okay? We'll get to the importance of that in just a few minutes. You want to catch that? Here she comes. Okay. Well, while she's doing that, we're going to talk about trapping a beaver. Now let's pretend that we're, I found a little pond about as big as this room, maybe a little bit bigger, and you guys are all sitting out in the water. And I'm sitting up on the shore here, and the, my favorite beaver trapping spot is what's called the beaver slide. There's several other ones. You, I could tear the dam apart a little bit and do a dam set. When the beaver hears the water running, it'll come and investigate why the water's running over the dam. And if I put a trap there, I might catch a beaver. But I prefer a particular place that the beaver travels in and out of the water a lot. When he travels in and out, he eventually wears a little spot down on the bank because he's dragging branches into the water. So he wears all the foliage around there down. Plus he wears the bank down. It makes a, a little muddy slippery slide is what it looks like. Okay. And I'm going to put a trap at the base of that slippery slide in the water. It's kind of like if I were to go to your house and put a trap at the bottom of your stairs in the house. Now, I know you're going to be coming down those stairs sooner or later. I'm going to catch you at the bottom, right? Same principle here. I put the trap in the water, about 12 inches deep. That allows the beaver to swim over the top of my trap before he stands up. Okay? So, here's the trap. The beaver slides, just imagine the beaver slides right here where I am. And the trap, the parts of the trap are the spring, because it springs up and down. The jaws right here, the part that catches. This little thing here is called the dog leg. I don't know why they called it that to begin with, but sometimes you just call it the dog now. And this part here is called the pan. And it's not like a mouse trap. You know, I'm not going to put any cheese on here. Okay. This is just the part that the beaver is going to step on. Okay. And that's going to set the trap off. And I'll show you how that works. I squeeze the, the springs down and the jaws will open up like this. I can hold the jaws open safely with my hand. Put the dog over it. See how it holds it down? 
And that dog goes into a little notch in the back of the pan. Now notice I safely reach under the jaws, push up on the pan, hold it tightly to get my hand out of the way. Now as long as I'm holding that pan, I can put my hand over here safely. As soon as I let go of that pan, it's set, I won't be putting my hand over there anymore. Okay, the trap is now set, ready to catch a beaver, and it's very fast. You can't, I've challenged kids before, we don't have time today, or I'd, I'd ask for a brave boy to come up and set the trap off with his finger. Okay. It usually involves a little blood, sometimes a broken bone, you know. Once in a while I'll, I'll get a volunteer to give me their pencil and I'll show you what it does to a pencil. Okay, I want to oh, I got a volunteer? Are you sure? <coughs> you don't mind yes. if you get that back in a couple pieces? No. Okay. You got an extra pencil for her? I <laughs> get my backpack. So if the beaver stepped I on that trap... Got a little souvenir today. Okay? That's how fast it is, okay? Wow. Okay, good. good. It doesn't it doesn't snap the beaver's leg in half. The beaver's leg's a little tougher than a pencil. Okay? But what happens? Well, let me get back to the trap and then we'll talk about it. So pretend now that I got the trap set. I put it out in the water, about 12 inches deep. Okay? And I'm not going to put it right in the middle of the slide because the beaver's legs aren't in the middle of his body. They're on the sides of his body, right? So I'm going to put it off to the side a little bit, one side or the other, over here. Then, here's the slide in the water. But what if the beaver comes over here and comes up the slide? He won't get my trap, will he? So in order to keep him from doing that, I get some extra sticks and I poke him in the mud right here. I build a little fence. I poke some over here, too. I got a fence on both sides, and the beaver comes swimming along, he sees those sticks, and he thinks, well, I'm not, you know, I could climb over those, but look, there's a spot right here that there's no sticks, I'll just swim right here in the middle. Aha, good deal. So he comes swimming along over here, okay? So I've increased the odds that I'm going to catch a beaver now, because I put it right in his path. There's another thing I'm going to do to increase the odds, I'm going to use a little bit of special beaver medicine. Okay, now on my outfit, I carry my beaver medicine right here in my, my antelope horn. Okay, but oftentimes times when I'm trapping, I also carry it in this little bottle here. Okay, this is a little red willow bottle that I have. <coughs> I hollowed it out, and inside this bottle is beaver lure, beaver medicine, and mountain mint oh, Boy, that's lovely. I'm going to pass this around and let you smell it. Take a nice, healthy sniff. No, be dainty like this. Go. It clear, clears your sinuses if you've got a cold. Okay? Now, I will caution you, however, don't touch it. Don't dip your finger down in there and taste it either, okay? Because it'll ruin your lunch. If you get it on your hands, it'll ruin your lunch too, because it'll get on anything you eat. It'll